Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by PJ O'Reilly for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. After two lengthy delays to its original release date, WayForward's Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is finally here. This pair of Game Boy Advance classics have withstood the test of time incredibly well, and honestly, the trickiest part of reviewing this shiny new collection has been finding anything of real substance to complain about. What we've got here is a treasure trove of delightfully addictive strategizing, wrapped up in a colorful comic book style that's almost impossible to put down once it's got its hooks in you. If you're an old war dog who's played the original 2001 and 2003 releases back in the day on the GBA, you'll already know what to expect for the most part here, with some of the slickest and most deceptively deep turn-based tactical action available on any platform. The Advance Wars series may not serve up the breadth of options of more serious turn-based efforts like XCOM or Total War. But what's here works so wonderfully well and is so perfectly balanced that it doesn't matter in the end. These are the sorts of games you make a permanent place for on your Switch, thanks to the endlessly replayable nature of the battles at hand, perfectly paced skirmishes that keep you glued to your screen and coming back for more. The action in Advance Wars may at first seem like frivolous cartoon fun, as you get to know the game's various enthusiastic commanding officers, but once the training wheels come off and you're in the thick of the action, you're 100% going to need to get your strategy cap on to survive the tight scrapes and ever-expanding array of enemy units and scenarios thrown at you. That's not to say you shouldn't give this one consideration if you're new to turn-based tactical action though. Far from it, in fact. Your onboarding officer, the super sassy Nell, is on hand at all times to explain the ins and outs of how everything works. The game's tutorial section has also been smartly reworked so that every new aspect of battle is explained as it's added to the mix, and there are guides aplenty to dip into whenever you need a refresher. There's also a casual mode that you can switch to at any time during either of the two campaigns that dials the difficulty down from its classic form to help smooth out any tough spots for any new recruits. And what of those two campaigns? Well, combined, you're looking at a solid 35 to 40 hours worth of tactics action here, perhaps considerably more if you're new to the genre, and we thoroughly recommend you start with the first campaign, as the admittedly throwaway story that backs up the core combat will be ruined somewhat if you choose to skip straight into Black Hole Rising. Starting off with 2001's Advance Wars, and after a quick run through the basics of unit movement and attacking with Nell, we're introduced to Andy, an energetic young Orange Star CO who's eager to get onto the battlefield to tangle with Blue Moon's invading forces. Opening battles see you get to grips with unit types and terrain tactics. They teach you how mountains give you a height advantage and how forests conceal your movements. You'll also learn the ins and outs of trotting light tanks around in order to block off corridors of movement and disrupt your adversary's plans. You'll then be slowly introduced to capturing cities in order to earn supplies with which to churn out more units from bases on the field of action. And it's in the carefully balanced selection of these units that the game finds its wonderfully addictive ebb and flow. Once you've got a full range of tanks, ships, submarines, helicopters, missile defense systems, recon jeeps, APCs, and so on in the mix, the real genius of Advance Wars begins to reveal itself. Maps that seem incredibly simplistic at first glance quickly become tense battlegrounds with bridges quickly turning into checkpoints where fierce tank battles play out as you tussle for territorial dominance and control of supply routes. The seas play host to face-offs between great warships capable of crushing targets from range and sneaky submarines that lurk beneath the surface, and the skies are dominated by the business of bombers, fighter jets, and helicopters as you carefully outmaneuver each other turn by turn. 
There are multiple flavors of combat happening all at the same time here, and every single one of them is delicious. On top of managing and maneuvering all your different unit types, you'll also need to consider a fog of war effect in certain missions, which ends up being a thick blanket of fog that stretches out across the combat zone, requiring you to send out recon teams and assert the position of hidden enemy troops. The rhythm of battle changes during these exchanges, making for slow excursions that require you to carefully consider terrain in order to zone in on your opponent, soften up their defenses, and locate their HQ without finding yourself surrounded. Remember too that an enemy HQ can be targeted and captured straight off the bat in order to end a confrontation in the game's default skirmishes, and you should always be both defending your own base of operations and taking advantage of fast moving transport options to sneak a unit in the back door and shut your foe down by surprise as they're distracted by combat elsewhere. The game mixes things up further by dishing out missions where you've got only a set number of days to complete your task or by charging you with capturing a certain number of cities before your opponent, leading to face-offs that see control of shorelines and roads become of paramount importance as you seek to block the enemy from progressing across certain sections of the map. All of this leads to the sort of tactical action that generates truly memorable situations, impossible escapes, wild comebacks, shock defeats, and triumphant routes, and it's all enhanced further by a cool cast of COs that come with their own special powers, which can be deployed in order to help you turn the tide of battle in an instant. All of the old favorites return here, with the likes of Andy, Max, Grit, Sammy, and so on, giving you lots of different CO powers and superpowers to play around with, such as Andy's ability to mend vehicles and units once his gauge is charged up, saving you from retreating to a captured base to heal, and Grit's sniper senses temporarily extend his army's attack range. Advance Wars gives you limited time with these various characters in comparison to the expanded choices afforded in Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising, but by jumping into the game's War Room mode and earning coins, you're able to unlock the full roster of available COs from Hachi's shop in order to rock them into battle against the CPU hone your skills, and earn those elusive S ranks on every map. Now, if you prefer your opponents in human form, you've also got the option of jumping into battles against up to three friends in either online battles, which we unfortunately weren't able to test for this review, or you can jump into local play that sees you share controllers on one console, or you can wirelessly link up to four switches locally to get stuck into combat that way. There are a ton of pre-made maps to buy from Hachi's shop for use in these various modes, and the game also comes with a somewhat dinky design room where you can get busy creating your own maps, which can be used for play with your pals. And we can only hope that the new edition of online play with your friends adequately performs once players start to jump into action on release day. Now, in terms of the enhancements made for this remake, beyond the addition of that online mode and a handful of modern conveniences, such as the ability to replay your last move or fast forward through an enemy's turn, it's all very much business as usual here from a gameplay perspective, which honestly is exactly what we wanted. Why mess with such a perfect formula? It's therefore in the graphical and audio presentation that we see the biggest changes, and this is the only area of the game that we have small criticism with. The crisp and clean new graphical style makes for an update that sticks closely to the vibe of the original games, taking the wonderful clunky units and pixelated maps of the classics and giving them a makeover that adds fine details, smooth edges, new animations, and plenty of delightfully swooshy cutscenes as you unleash your various CO powers. The audio evolution adds much to the experience too, with lots of excellent voice acting bringing the cast of characters to life like never before. The UI is also super clean and easy to parse in all situations, with every bit of info you need in any situation available by simply moving over a unit, holding in a shoulder button for further details, or pressing B to check out attack radiuses. So the only real criticism we have then is the fact that we're not totally sold on how the battle maps are presented in a sort of play box board game style. Yeah, that's being incredibly nitpicky, but 
that's pretty much it. You get used to it as you play, and we've all but forgotten it now, but early on, it feels like a design decision that pulls you out of the action a little. We get that it's perhaps a decision made to further remove the warfare at hand, from anything resembling real world events, but we definitely prefer the original style of zoomed in combat arenas. There's also perhaps a sense that there's nothing really new to dig into here. There are no big surprises joining forces with the delight in this beautifully presented remake. It's very much what you would expect. Beyond those minor complaints though, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is indeed a delightful reworking of a pair of bona fide strategy classics. The core gameplay here hasn't aged a day with battles that feel perfectly pitched and finely balanced throughout. The story is throwaway stuff, yeah, but it's hard not to get caught up in the infectious enthusiasm of its cast of highly likable COs. The whole package looks great and performs perfectly in both docked and handheld modes. We just want remakes of Days of Ruin and Dual Strike now, please Nintendo. We're fully addicted to the Advance Wars series all over again. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is a delightful reimagining of two classic GBA strategy titles. The gameplay here remains as endlessly addictive, finely balanced, and challenging as ever, and the addition of a handful of modern conveniences and the ability to play against friends online makes for a slick overall package. With a crisp, clean new art style that adds lots of new animations and cutscenes, a remastered soundtrack, and voice acting in the mix, this is a polished return to Advance Wars action that's got us fully addicted to the series all over again. This is the sort of game you'll reserve a permanent place for on your console, a timeless experience you'll keep tucked away on your Switch for the foreseeable future. We here at Nintendo Life give Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. Now, if you'd like to read our full written review, you could find that along with more news and information on the Advance Wars series over at NintendoLife.com. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you so much again to PJ for spending all that time with the new Advance Wars remakes. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, and we will see you all next time.